Hey guys, so this is me, your trainer. My name is Gaurav Khandelwal. So let's go with the given slides on the Terraform. So when I talk about Terraform, guys, it's an infrastructure as a code service. Now, why do we need an infrastructure as a code? To automate the creation of cloud. Imagine you are working in an organization. You are tired of creating the environments manually, which are repeatedly being asked. You want to automate this task so you can create the environment with the clicks of button. Speed up the process, remove the dependencies. Then you can automate the creation of infrastructure using the services like Terraform. Terraform is a third party service. It's a product from HashiCorp, which can help you to create the templates, which can help you to create your infrastructure. And this is open source software, which can work with any cloud. I'll show you when we go to the relevant slides. So before we go, we need to understand what is AWS, then why Terraform, what is Terraform, what are the use cases, how do we use the life cycle, and then some of the demos and hands-on on Terraform. That's the part of this agenda. We should not go directly Terraform because you need to know why it is true. Without cloud learning, Terraform is like, you know, a, without a requirement, is developer is trying to write a code. A developer cannot write a code if you do not specify the requirement. So without learning AWS, without learning cloud computing, there is no point to use Terraform. So let's try to understand what cloud computing AWS is, then we will start with Terraform. So before we go, let's understand the cloud computing part of it which is the first requirement. Suppose you want to host a website. I want to host an application. What is the prerequisite? Imagine I want to build an application. What is the prerequisite? The prerequisite is to having the servers, correct? Now having the servers is not easy. Having the servers is not easy. You need to buy a hardware on which you deploy. Buying a hardware is expensive. Not every person can buy a hardware because Traditionally, the hardwares are always bought by the wealthy organizations. Buying a hardware of 4 CPU, 8 GB RAM will cost you 4 to 5 lakh rupees. If I talk in terms of USD, it could be $5,000. And likewise, if you need more hardware, it's expensive. You cannot just buy like that. And followed by after buying, you need to set up, you need to monitor, you need to maintain, you need to have a data center, cooling system, security. Ooh, not easy, eh? Not everyone can manage a data center and host applications. And that's where the cloud computing era has begun. They know that not a common person can buy a hardware. Then why don't you make our data centers to be reachable to everyone? Now, because of cloud computing, hundreds of applications, the most popular applications what you use have been taken birth by cloud computing. If I name it Netflix, Amazon Prime, Airbnb, Ola, Uber, Zomato, Swiggy, Trivago, Make My Trip, all these applications which you use regularly in your life are built on cloud computing. They are not owned by some common person or a wealthy person who can have data centers. This all created by a common engineers like us who utilize the cloud with a model of pay as you they created they succeeded and they paid for the resources what they use now, what are the disadvantages when you have the hardware to purchase if you're not using the cloud computing the setup is expensive troubleshooting problems are always high tedious and it conflicts your business goals what do you want to do and what you are trying to manage. The setup itself never completes where you go and do the actual action. So cannot focus on the application or a business use case. And if the traffic is more, you cannot scale your servers. On-prem data center is not easy. Tedious, time consuming, not edgy. How do we fix these kind of problems? And that's where the cloud computing is the solution. That's where the entire new era of IT has been evolved. Put your data on the cloud servers, 
and no buying more servers, expensive servers. Scalability is handled, high availability is achieved, agility has been received, server capacity can be you know, mapped according to the user's requirement. The cloud providers will manage your servers and no worries about underlying infrastructure. You don't spend time on managing. You spend time on building the applications. And that's what cloud computing does. Then, it is the use of the remote servers on the internet to store, manage, process data rather than the local servers. A cloud computing is a methodology where you create the on-demand request over the internet. You don't do from your hardware or local servers. You do from the internet. You use others' data center over the internet to create the resources. Now, what is AWS? Now, AWS is one of the cloud providers. The, the concept which we learned cloud computing is offered by AWS. Computer power, data storage, content delivery, other functionalities to make your businesses grow. And one of the most reputed cloud providers. We need not to explain or know about Amazon because we know the facts how successful this company is. It's always on the notes and everyone who belongs to a bit of IT knows about what AWS is. No special introduction required. We have different domains in cloud. Compute relates to creating virtual machines. You can do migrations. You can do storage. You can do database messaging. So when you see different domains, what does this picture tell you? This picture tell you the opportunities. Like MBBS is a domain where you can be a dentist, you can be a heart surgeon, you can be a uh, pediatrician, you can be anything. Cloud is a domain where, where you can be a network guy, uh, security guy, hosting guy, database guy, or you can be an architect. It opens your various roles to join company and work. Wides of opportunities and none of the demanded best technology to learn to stay safe for the next 10 years. Now, why Terraform? Now, Terraform is something that makes things possible faster. Organizations starting started using AWS, they created the servers, databases manually. Now they need to repeatedly create the environments multiple times. A manual doing is not a scalable approach. You need someone to automate this and that's where Terraform comes in, which means to learn Terraform, you should know AWS. Without learning AWS, creating Terraform is like a developer with a no requirement, but it's good. Learning AWS and then adding Terraform is one of the best profile in the world. This profile is a deadly combination, guys. If you are a cloud engineer and you automate using Terraform, is like blindly every organization will keep you and ask you to just stay with them. It's a deadly combination. Now, why Terraform? You would have know some tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Salstack, many more. But you know, these all are what are these all? These are so many tools that are very similar to Terraform but they all are configuration management tools. All these tools which I'm talking about, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Salt Stack, this all can help your servers to get configured. Once the server is ready, inside configurations, creating a folder, file, installing the software, deployments can be done. But Terraform is different. It is not talking about the inside configurations. It is talking about the creation of the resources. If you want to create a server, you want to create a database, you want to create a messaging system, the creation of cloud resources are handled by Terraform. It builds the basic block of structure. And including that, once it builds, you can use some other provisioners like Chef, Ansible, Puppet supports inside Terraform. You can use their libraries to install the configurations also. See, once you have a home, now decorations are different parts which can be done. So these all, all the top tools are for decorative purpose. Terraform is the one which builds the home, which builds your infrastructure. 
so it is an orchestration tool that builds your entire infrastructure it could be one two ten hundred resources it helps you to create an immutable infrastructure what is immutable infrastructure immutable infrastructure means it does not make changes once it is created imagine there are servers created you want to make changes it will not do on the existing one it creates a new fresh server for you all the time so terraform will help you to create a new flavored infrastructure every time when you run so you don't have compatibility issues dependency issues and all the code which you write in terraform is a declarative code series of steps which you can easily read in a human readable format and great documentation by terraform company here she called you just read the documents copy paste learn how to you know integrate them and you start creating what is terraform it's a open source infrastructure as a code tool developed by hashicorp company where you can stop your cloud where you can store your cloud infrastructure setups at at any cloud provider with terraform you can work with aws azure google kubernetes oracle alibaba so it is cloud agnostic it is a tool that can support all the cloud providers i think that is something what we need to learn if you learn one tool which can work with any cloud your life becomes easier structured learning at edureka let's understand what this point means this point talks about the aws solution architect training course so what this mean before you go and learn terraform don't forget about joining or learning the aws where you learn the solution architect training course i'll show you the road map what exactly it looks like if you are looking for a cloud architect training aws you want to learn aws you want to be an architect then this is the path what edureka provides the training consists of 10 modules all these 10 modules will have live demo sessions documentations demo files quizzes diagrammatic presentations so with by doing this you will be definitely in a shape of working in real time as a cloud architect in the organizations so the step one is introduction to the cloud you will talk about what aws is and a bit of hands on in second you will talk about security management in the cloud what are the different security services in aws and then we will have a bit of hands on on that in three you will have ms and ec2 virtual machines how do we work with load balancing auto scaling all the options will be part of and again and hands on sessions live by the diagrammatic presentation from the trainer module 4 will talk about storage options in the cloud backbone of learning s3 elastic file systems elastic block storages many more options we'll see a complete hands on on this module 5 will talk about load balancing auto scaling and dns service like route 50 which makes you highly available applications to create it's a journey to learn each and every component it's amazing then module 6 talks about your database services how do you create the backend database services which is the most popular service how do you integrate them how do you provision them how do you manage how do you take backup sort of it? then you have module 7 networking monitoring services how do you create the private cloud in the public clouds like aws vpc peering nating public private cloud supports right this all will be a part of now then module 8 automation services application services and serverless lambda service module 9 automation service configuration management and automation and then module 10 understanding about the architectural designs devops tools and other things so this is the high level walk through of the content what we want to learn now let's try to understand the terraform use case 
imagine we have a company called rapidus and they wanted a solution to work with different clouds to automate the infrastructure creation and also take the backups the reason behind doing is they have a lot of clients they wanted their all applications to be managed by an automation solution and also take the backup of the applications and they work in different clouds so which tool they should analyze that can automate different cloud providers and also take the backups they want this setup to be faster they want the infrastructure environments to be used at the clicks of button and manage the infrastructure in the public clouds different public clouds so to answer this the solution is terraform when the developers commit the code to the gitlab the gitlab can call terraform because they are using terraform to build the infrastructure in different clouds which can also help them to take the backups so with the one one single solution they can create the resources in different clouds and also take the back so this is how the organizations automate the infrastructure creation using terraform they write the piece of code put it in the gitlab they run and it creates on behalf of them benefits quickly create infrastructure over multiple clouds need not to do manually flexibility to launch infrastructure whenever you need you don't have any dependencies whenever you feel like you need an environment run and it will be created reduction in the time of market whenever you say it will be ready to adapt and automated backups with the clicks of button terraform life cycle what it consists of terraform is a small coding not a large java coding but it is a kind of coding that help you to create an infrastructure very interesting i'll show you as when you'll love it quite easy so there are most popular commands that you work with terraform i use says which language to use on terraform hcl hashicorp is the company who created terraform and they create their own language called hashicorp right hcl hcl is the language being used behind terraform so terraform init will initialize the provider which cloud you want to work it will initialize the creation plan will make you to see a dry run what you are going to create if you see the dry run looks fine then you apply to create your resources what you write the code to create and destroy if you don't want it will delete your infrastructure what you did these are the most popular commands init will initialize your provider plan will generate the plan to see what is being created applies to apply delete is to destroy there are many other commands which can help yes to use terraform you need to learn a programming language called hcl hashi power configuration language how terraform work so to work with terraform the developers or you can say the infrastructure engineers they write a piece of code which is hashi corp conf configuration language code the extension should be .tf file all the Terra terraform files configuration file should have the extension with .tf which is like a terraform file and when you run the command terraform initialize terraform apply terraform run or something like that the terraform will read your configuration file whatever you write to create it will use the provider and create the resources in the cloud and whatever you create it will maintain the state it's called terraform state so that from the state it knows what has been created you can manage the resources so let me show you some of the demo see it's a terraform is itself a 30 hours of training at least 20 hours of training i'll show you a small couple of demos to understand how does it let's try to install terraform in any of the operating systems and see some of the demos so to install the terraform let's do some realistic demos now just go to the website of terraform all you need to do is terraform download if you want to download terraform say terraform download. you see terraform.io downloads click on this hashicorp is the company and which operating system you want to download it can if you are a mac user just execute these commands it will tap the Hashi Corp binary and it install that stuff. If you are a Windows user, just download this 86-bit or 32-bit 
RMD file and binary file and run it. Linux just curl, download, zip, and execute this. And like straightforward commands. So once we install this, imagine I'm a Mac user, I already have this installed. Let me check I have been installed with this or not. I think I'm already having that test data form with me. View install HashiCorp. So once I have the Terraform, you can choose any directory from your path. I'll go to my, you know, let me go to a webinar folder here. I might have one. And I might have this file. Let me remove this file. And let me create a demo.tf. I'm just creating a Terraform file to start the demos. You can create the file extension with TF, which is required. I'm going and creating a Terraform file. To work with Terraform, it has a beautiful syntax. It needs to have a variable file. You can create a main.tf file and all. If you want to create or work with Terraform, you need to have some fixed block of resources. One of them is provider. Why provider? Because Terraform works with different providers. AWS, GCP, Azure, and all. So first you need to start with, you are telling Terraform, hey, you need to connect to AWS. So first block you need to write in the file is Terraform provider. So you go to and type Terraform AWS provider. Right. You see registry.terraform. You see a lot of options. Right. You can use provider is equal to AWS, region is equal to this. So if you want to use a provider AWS, you can use this. You can give a specific version, you can give a region, you can give access key and secret key to connect. So I'll copy this. Right. So like this, you have each and every service file, whichever you want to use with the syntax. I have made things simpler for you so that you can practice. I have documented all these in advance. Right. So first what I'll do, I'll use this provider. For the provider block, I'll copy this. I'll paste here. I'm saying provider AWS. I want to create in US East one region. AWS has so many regions. So let me connect to AWS. So I'm into AWS. You see different regions. I want to create resources in US East one. So I selected this. Now to connect, you need to provide the credentials. The credentials are called access key and secret key credentials. So Terraform, you should, tell, you should tell Terraform, hey, connect to this account. And to connect to this account, you need to provide the credentials, which are called access key and secret access. So we'll go to, so these all things you will learn when you learn AWS. If you are not aware of what I'm talking about, how to generate these all, please enroll into the Edureka Solution Architect Training, which is a prerequisite. So I'll create a new access key and secret key. I'll specify the credentials here. And I'll specify the credentials here also. So the first block which you always work with Terraform is which provider you want to connect. I want to connect to AWS. In this region, I want to work with to connect. These are the credentials. So the first block is it. Now what do you want to create? You can create a server. You can create a bucket. You can create a database. Any element you can create. Any service you can create. For each and every service, the, the Terraform provide you the documentation. Imagine I want to create a server. I'll go to EC2. Go to the service. Now, which one, which resource you want to create? I want to create an EC2 instance. Right? This is the server. So either you can go with an updated image, or I can say use this one. Or I can use this particular resource. Anything is fine. You can select any resource, this image. So I'm telling resource. This is the keyword AWS instance to create name. You can specify which image you can select the image from that region, which instance size you can specify this. So similarly, what I did, I already have one specified for you. I copy this. So I said resource AWS instance name foo. You can give any name of the resource. Now to create a server, you need an image, which is a prerequisite value. Now this image I got from the US East one server. You see, go to this. You click on create instance, you will get an image. See, this is the image. As it exists in US East 1, 
I went to that, I copied the image, I'm telling, hey, use this image to create. You need to provide the details. So I already provided this. And what instance you want to create the type t2.my. I don't need this subnet right now. I'll delete this parameter. This looks fine. So let's create this first of all. Right? We have a provider and we have a resource to create. So what I'll do, I'll say terraform init. Init will initialize the provider. I'm using AWS, so it will check your file. It will say, okay, I need to connect to AWS and then it will authenticate the credentials which you have. It says uh, initialize successfully to AWS. Now, Terraform, either you can say plan. Plan will show you what it is creating. It will say Terraform plan. It will read the file and show you, hey, I'm going to create the server. See, it is showing you that one resource will be created. And what is that? It is going to create a server with this image, which we specified the details at this particular instance. If this looks fine, all you need to do is Terraform apply. Now it will apply, it will create the resource in your AWS console. You want to give the value yes, and it creates. Now you are not doing manually. Likewise, you write once a code and you can rerun in number of times. Right? You can create a versionable template so you can keep adding different values and you can. See, the resource got created. Let's go to the, if you refresh, you see, Terraform code, this is the instance in a running state. Now this is created by Terraform. Imagine you want to destroy, you say, Terraform destroy. You initialized, you created, you applied, and imagine if you are, you know, you're done with the learnings, destroy will create your resource. So once we know the AWS architect, all the basics, then we can use Terraform for easy deployments configuration. Absolutely right. That is the reason why I'm saying, if you want to learn Terraform, you need to know how cloud works. Because if you don't know what is IAM, what is EC2, what are the parameters, then there is no point of learning Terraform. This is like building a profile. Terraform is amazing. No doubt about it, great requirement. But before you learn, you should know what cloud is. So join the training, learn it in five weeks, and then enroll into the Terraform, which is like next level of learn. It is as simple as without a requirement, the developer cannot work. Without knowing cloud, you cannot work with Terraform. Right? I'll go with the next example. I have seen, right? We have seen how to create a resource in a region like US East one. Imagine. I want to create two servers in two different regions. Right? Currently, this is creating this server in US East 1, which is the default. Imagine you have a requirement of creating one server in US East 1 and another server in, in US East 2. Then we can duplicate the provider. You can duplicate the provider giving two different regions. And in the resource, you will specify the provider alias. How do we do? Let me copy the code. I'll copy this second provider details. I'll copy this access key and take that key. Right, so what I'm doing, the first provider talks about US East 1 region with the credentials. The second provider talks about US East 2 with the credentials, which is good. But how do you let the servers know which one to use what? How do you let the resources know which one to use what? So in the first case, I will say this instance has to be created in default. I'm not specifying any provider alias. So this will be created in US East 1. But in the second provider, you see I have given an alias tag, which is like telling to use behind the resource. So I'll go. And I'll use this resource where I'll say, while creating this server, okay, here I'll say, using this server, right? So I'm creating the, another instance, foo1, 
this image is coming from us east 2 which i have picked now here i am telling when you are creating this image in us east 2 i am using the areas i'm telling use the provider coming from the aws but the region is this so it's very clearly known that this has to be used by the default one the first provider and this resource while creating use the provider it will go to the provider aws and it will check with the alias name this so it will use this region so like this syntaxes will help you to create your resources i'll say terraform in it terraform apply now this is creating two servers you see one in us east one and one in us east two one in foo one and second in i click on yes two resources created in two different regions with the help of alias provider let's delete this imagine you want to create a bucket i don't want these servers to create i want to create a bucket how do you do we'll go to the bucket resource we'll go to s3 here right you can learn the documentations from here i'll go to the s3 service i want to create a bucket i'll use aws s3 bucket you can see i'll say resource aws s3 bucket the name of the bucket you can specify this is the bucket name that you want to specify and tags like when you create a bucket it should be dev environment prod you can specify the name and tag and also this is to create a bucket now bucket should have a policy whether it should be a public bucket private bucket so you get another resource called aws s3 bucket acl now you give the name and which bucket you want to create you can you, you can use the previous resource to integrate you see aws s3 bucket this one followed by the b is the name of the bucket and followed by id so first it creates the bucket once the bucket is created it will use the id of that bucket and make that bucket private this is called reusability of the code or i can say mapping interpolation resource mapping let's copy this both and you can make this bucket to be created i'll go to the code and say vi demo.tf excluding this all i will delete this all we don't need this we need one provider to create now i just want to create a bucket and i'll give a better naming convention this bucket might name exist i'll say rather than tf i can say gk so my gk test bucket will create and this bucket resource will have the private bucket access given because it is taking the value from this particular bucket name followed by the name of the id etc form in it i'll say terraform so it's going to create two resources one bucket and second the bucket policy which is private to apply you see you have two resources created let's go to the bucket let's go to the bucket you see there will be a name called tk you see my gk test bucket northern virginia i'll say there are from whatever you create for the testing learning perspective do not forget to delete so that's about terraform guys it's quite interesting to learn and that's the part of the learning with the webinar so that's all from this webinar all the best